Hello everyone, um, it's me again. In today's lesson, we'll continue talking about the United Nations, but this time we will be focusing on how it operates. Um, do you remember the primary aims and main areas of the UN's work, which are also called the three pillars of the UN? We talked about them last time. Well, they are secure international peace, eliminate poverty, and promote development, and protect human rights. Today we are going to cover all three of them in order to have a deeper understanding of the UN's work. Um, so, first, um, first aim of the organization is keeping the peace. So how does the UN work for peace and security? Well, the UN has played a major role in helping warring parties to reach peaceful solutions. Um, as we saw last time, the Security Council is the UN's body tasked with maintaining peace and security. Quindi è proprio il Consiglio di Sicurezza che è quell'organo che ha la specifica funzione di mantenere la pace e la sicurezza. Um, so how does the United Nations try to secure and maintain international peace? Well, there are different types of conflict and security challenges that the UN must face. For example, wars between states, civil wars, terrorism, the proliferation of nuclear weapons, and so on and so forth. Um, the UN has different means for dealing with these challenges. Means, quindi uh, mezzi. For instance, it can prevent conflict through mediation. It can enforce peace settlements by sending peacekeepers. We already talked about peacekeepers last time briefly. It can rebuild countries emerging from conflict. It can support justice through international tribunals and it can create international rules. For example, on conduct during war, war crimes, arms control, and so on and so forth. But what can the Security Council do specifically? Um, when a particular armed conflict is brought before the Security Council, um, la volta scorsa no, abbiamo parlato del fatto che qualsiasi Stato può portare davanti al Consiglio di Sicurezza, una determinata problematica legata alla, alla pace. Um, so, when a particular armed conflict is brought before the Security Council, the Security Council usually first asks the parties involved in the conflict to reach agreement by peaceful means, quindi tramite mezzi pacifici, for example, through negoci negotiations. Um, but if fighting breaks out, continues or gets worse, the council tries to secure a ceasefire. Quindi si assicura un cessate il fuoco. Cerca insomma di... Um, di, di Che, che venga appunto assicurato. Um, the council then might send a peacekeeping mission to the area. But what are peacekeeping operations? Here's a video that introduces peacekeeping with original footage of peacekeeping operations. 
if you're curious um, you can stop this video lesson to watch the video and then we'll meet back here um, well peacekeeping operations involve military police and civilian personnel what does civilian personnel mean uh, well they are people working for the UN administrators economists legal experts human rights monitors specialists in civil affairs and governance um, humanitarian workers communication experts um, who are carrying out legal financial administrative technical and educational functions um, they are sent to a conflict zone to monitor a ceasefire che abbiamo detto significa um, cessare il fuoco help end a conflict prevent it from re-emerging administer war-torn countries enforce peace settlements and protect civilians at risk well um, does the UN have an army? The UN does not have an army of its own. It uses troops, equipment and money from its member states in peacekeeping missions. Um, peacekeeping operations are established by the Security Council, directed by the Secretary General of the UN through a special representative who is the head of mission, capo missione in italiano. The head of mission has authority over the peacekeeping operations activities, military, police and civilian resources. Um, the troops are commanded by their military commanders and all operations are governed by three fundamental principles consent of the warring parties impartiality and the non-use of force except in self-defense these are very very important and um, as you can see here uh, troops wear blue helmets and use white vehicles um, clearly marked with uh, UN, as you can see here. Mm, and another question might be, what happens when a country ignores the decisions of the Security Council? Well, when decisions of the Security Council are not respected, the Council may take several actions to ensure their implementation. It can impose sanctions on trade and other economic activities, trade scambi commerciali, take other measures such as arms embargoes. Um, an embargo is when a government refuses to trade arms, in this case, with a country, usually because of a political problem inside the country um, and diplomatic restrictions. Quindi uh, in italiano sarebbe embargo sulle armi. And it can also authorize the use of force in certain instances. But this is usually a last resort. Quindi un'ultima risorsa che potremmo tradurre anche come ultima spiaggia, come si suol dire. To be used only if peaceful means of settling a dispute have been exhausted. Quindi quando si esauriscono tutti i modi pacifici di risolvere una controversia, allora ecco che mm, il, il consiglio autorizza l'uso della forza, ma solo come appunto ultima risorsa, ultima spiaggia. Um, some examples of Security Council's, uh, Council res resolutions um, include authorizing the use of force to protect civilians in Libya in 2011, 
um, enacting sanctions against North Korea in response to its nuclear weapons program, for example, prohibiting the export of some military supplies and luxury goods to North Korea in 2006, and restoring the democratically elected government in Haiti in 1994. So they are very, very diverse um, in nature. Um, the International Day of Peace was established in 1981 and is observed around the world on the 21st of September. It is used by the UN as an invitation for a 24-hour global ceasefire to provide hope for people living through war. This is a very interesting thing, no? Che, quindi praticamente... Um, nel giorno internazionale della pace, insomma, si, invita, si invitano gli stati in guerra a 24 ore di cessate il fuoco, appunto, per, uh, per dare speranza a, a coloro che vivono, appunto, in situazioni, in situazioni di questo tipo. Um, Pillar number two. Um, the United Nations Protecting Human Rights. Um, what are human rights? Well, human rights are the rights and freedoms to which every human being is entitled. Quindi ha diritto, regardless of any distinction, a prescindere da qualunque distinzione. They have existed for hundreds of years in different societies all over the world. They are inalienable, which means that they cannot be taken away or given away by the possessor. They can only be limited through appropriate judicial processes. So, for example, when a person goes to prison, um, these person's freedoms are limited. They are interdependent. So, for example, the right to political participation cannot be fully exercised without the right to education. Quindi sono interdipendenti. L'uno porta ad un altro e influisce su, sugli altri. And they are based on the values of equity, dignity, justice, equality and respect. And they were officially recognized as universal values when the UN was born in 1945. Um, one of the first actions of the newly founded UN in 1945, indeed, was to draft, quindi um, preparare, no? Creare a document containing the basic human rights shared by all people everywhere. This resulted in the creation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was adopted by the UN General Assembly in 1948. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights recognizes the dignity of all people and asserts that human rights should apply equally to everyone, no matter who they are or where they live. We can find this in the very first article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We are all born free and equal. Once again, you can stop this video lesson to watch this short video on the first article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights.